If I forget you, Jerusalem, let my tongue cleave to my mouth. Some of us will miss heaven by eating and cheese. Have you heard that before? Eh? Yeah. Those were not there when I gave this up. How on earth somebody can measure the distance that somebody will miss heaven by 18 inches? Can you imagine? It is said that, and, and I would say an, an adult and a great individual, the distance between the mind, the, the brain, I would say, and the heart is about 18 inches. You know what happened? A lot of us, we rationalize him too much and we do not allow them to reach the, the seat, the headquarters of love, which is the heart. We are saying, I need soul, I need peace in my soul, peace of mind, I love, I need heart, I need love in my heart. That's what we say all the time. So as a result of that, David Groove was a migration theologian. A theologian reflects on the people on the go. He said that, you know, we will meet 18 inches by the fact that, you know, we refuse to allow certain things that we think to go down in our heart and so that we can make the change that is necessary. And as a result of that, some of us will meet, miss heaven by 18 inches. Now, last night we spoke about forgiveness. And today, the, the gospel reading, I mean, I don't have to, to, to say anything about it. But I want to do a little contextualize, con contextualization, a context, a theology of the context. Context matters. You know, when people are talking about Black Lives Matter, context matters. Because any text which is removed from its context is a pretext. You get it? Yes. When a text is removed from its context, it becomes immediately a pretext. That is why, you know, when non Catholic giving us blows, they always say that Catholic doesn't know the Bible. They say, when giving us blows, they always come with a, a, a passage of scripture, a fragment, but they don't allow you to read what is before and what is after. And they take it just like that and quote it to you. And when you hear that, people quoting scripture, right, left, and center, you say, yes, this is a believer, this is a Bible scholar, therefore, I should go and follow them. I want to tell you, when Jesus was being tempted in the desert, even the evil one was quoting scripture right left and center. That's true. Not everybody is quoting scripture. That doesn't mean that the, that doesn't mean that the person is a, is a believer. He's deep into God. Mm -mm, nothing like that. I said that is because I want to establish the, the context of the first reading. My dear brothers and sisters, God, I mean in human terms, God in the, in the Godhead, there is a desire. There is a great desire for God to live in a covenantal relationship with humanity, as I said last time. Covenantal relationship. Remember I said, a covenant is an agreed upon decision between two parties. And everybody is to assume their responsibility. Remember, God has had so many covenants with humanity. Not, not only one, two, three, no. how many of them? It is said that knowing who the human person is, God never wants to leave us like a loose cannon. He wants us to come to have an agreement with him. Because when we say something, we don't stick to it. We want to go all over the place. We don't want to stick to it. That is why God wants, there is a desire for us to be in a covenant and relationship with God. As I said, that's right. The first covenant was with Adam and Eve, not you? That's the first covenant. And they refer to it as the Adamic covenant. As the Adamic covenant with Adam and Eve. And then you can have everything you want at the garden. Do not touch the fruit, the forbidden fruit of knowledge of good and evil. But the evil one said, that's not, I'm. <laughs> <laughs> The evil one, the evil, you, you, know, you are going for, where are you coming from? The evil one says that, you know, hey, that old man telling you not to touch this and that. Don't worry about it. If you touch it, 
you will, I mean, you will get to know, you, you, your mind will be open. You will get to know just like he, he know. And we know, we want to know, we love to know. And I always tell people that not everything that you know is good for you. Sure. Certain thing that you don't hear about it is better for you. <laughs> because when you get to know about it, it starts to torment your mind, your spirit, and you become restless. As I said, you are too much in. Restless. <laughs> You cannot find a place for your soul, for your body, and nothing like that. Sometimes, something is better for you when you don't hear it. I'm going to tell you that. We are, you know, observing the 40 days of Lent. I'm going to tell you what happened once. I went to a barber shop. Listen carefully, eh? When I was, when I, while I'm in the barber shop, you know barber shop is a place where people, young men especially, they, they come, you don't need to go and read newspaper. You don't need to go and go on news online, nothing like that. Go to a barber shop to get to know everything that's going on. The barber is talking, the people who come to work there, they're talking. So in the barber shop, uh, two friends, they have been, they have, one was there before and the one happened to come and meet the other. And they're talking. He said, Bro, I have a problem. And you know, this is a man trying to help his brother. He said, What is the problem? He said, you know, I have something to tell my wife, I cannot tell her that. Not today I trying to tell her that. He said, what is the problem? What it is? Tell me. I'm your brother. I can try to help you. He told him, I have an outside child, but I cannot tell the woman that. The other, the other man said, Woo, no man, you're good to go. Listen carefully. We are, your wife is Catholic? He said, yes. We are in the limited season. When they go to the church, the priest and them saying that you know you must forgive. Take the take capitalize on the 40 days of night. Tell her that in the midst of the Lenten season, she must forgive you. <laughs> I'm really you. She must forgive you. He said, That is a good idea. As soon as I reach home, I will confess and admit that. I mean, I don't know how it is in Barbados, but before in Haiti. If you had a child that was born an extramarital, I mean, in a, from an extramarital relationship, you cannot go to registry and declare the child as your son or daughter unless the wife give her approval. If you do so, you will go to prison and spend the rest of your life until she decides to let you go. That was, that was it. So something like that was the man had that in mind. Yes, my dear brothers and sisters, let us go back. You see today's reading? It's a little interesting reading. In fact, that is why I said context matters. The first reading is taken from a very interesting type of writing, type of literature and biblical tradition. They refer to it as apocalyptic writing or apocalyptic literature, the book of Daniel. So Daniel, the context is that it is the first Babylonian attack on Jerusalem that is in the context of that, as a result of that. You know, it, it, like, you know, towards the end of the 5th and the beginning of the 6th century. Toward the end of the 6th and the beginning of the 5th century. That is the context. And remember, the Babylonian exile, the Babylonian experience, was a very difficult experience for the people of Israel. Up to today, even, you know, I mean, even the Rastafarian and the when you listen to them, they refer to the police as a Babylonian system. You, you, you've never heard yourself you're talking about the police, the Babylonian system. You, they were moving away from the system. Which means that there is the evil empire. Babylon was, was perceived like that. And then, even up to the, the experience was so bad. And it marked the collective consciousness of the people of Israel. Like in Dominica, Maria, the hurricane that passed in, in, in 2017. Up to today, whatever you refer to Maria in Dominica, Every Dominican have that somewhere. It is registered in the subconscious. Subconscious is like goal seeking by nature. It is registered somewhere because it was a difficult experience. It was a collective experience. Everybody suffers from that. The Babylonian exile was something like that. That is why up to today, in the twenty-first century, no, not before that, but in this part of the world, even the great reggae singer Bob Marley. Sing that experience in the song. You know it? By the river of Babylon, the we sat down where we were. 
when you remember Zion. Okay, stop hiding. I know you're not, I, I don't want to see myself. <laughs> so this Zion they're talking about is back home. Uh, like Naya spoke about double consciousness that we have in the Caribbean, Caribbean people. You hear what your mind is, is you, I mean, you, you know you belong to somewhere else. You are brought here because we are all that's for in this part of the world. Something like that was the context of the book of Daniel. No, what happened is that in the book of Daniel, Daniel complaining about the fact that, you know, one of them, I don't know if you know the cantica of Daniel, all, all the works of the Lord who bless the Lord, to him be highest glory and praise forever. Azariah, Misael, who oh bless the Lord. They, these fellows, they were in the, in, in, in the midst, in the fire. So, and then they're they asking God to come to rescue them. But this first reading, the context of the first reading, is the context, there is a covenant that is mentioned there. We know, uh, you know, as I said, the first covenant was with Adam and Eve, and they failed. And the second covenant was with Noah. You remember the covenant with Noah? Yes, the Noah covenant. And at the end, after the Noah covenant, you know what? You remember what appeared after after the, after the, after the flood? Yeah, the rainbow. The rainbow. the rainbow. the rainbow. But before we go there, remember, whenever I you see water in biblical tradition, as I said last night, it is a symbol of a new beginning. And the scientific water of baptism, what it was going to be, and the new and everlasting covenant of Christ. But the rainbow that appears in heaven, it is, you know how many how many colors they say the rainbow has in it? Seven colors. Last night, in the first reading, the Syrian has to go and die seven times in the river, the seven sacraments of the church. And the seven colors that of the rainbows represent again the seven sacraments of the church. I mean, the LGBT community adopted as the, as, the, as the flag, but that is not what it is at all from a theological perspective. It is a symbol of the seven sacraments of the church. Now, my dear brothers and sisters, knowing who the human person is, God always wants to be in a close relationship with us. Because God, or we are, or we prove ourselves to be what they call a VUCA. When is a VUCA? V U C A. VUCA. Based on the human person is volatile. You stand for this morning. I was trying to, to, to I can remember that. You stand for uncertainty. We are uncertain being. C stands for complex being. And A stands for ambiguous being. Volatility, uncertainty, complexity, ambiguity. Knowing who we are. God always wants to be in contact because we are very volatile. We are very uncertain. We are very complex. We are very ambiguous. As a result of that, God wants to be in a relationship with us. Now, to tie us up something, we have to hold on to something. After that comes the covenant with Abraham. This is the covenant that is mentioned in the first reading. When Isaiah was in the midst of the fire, and then what happened? He was asking God for your sake. Let me let me go over the reading for you. The person did it so well, but I mean, he said that you know, Azariah stood in the heart of the fire and he began to pray. Oh, do not abandon us forever. For the sake of your name, do not repudiate your covenant. Do not withdraw your favor from us. Here did he be called. For the sake of Abraham, yes, your friend, of Isaac, your servant. And of Israel, your holy one. These three. Abraham, Isaac, Israel. You know, Israel was when the name of Jacob was changed from Jacob to Israel. Right? Yes. That is he they refer to. These three, they are referred to as our fathers and faith. Now, when they're in trouble, they call in on the covenant, the big fellows who have signed covenant with God on behalf of the people. They call in their name. So that God, as if they are appeasing God for God to come and assist them. Now, and he continue to say, and you know, I mean, I mean, to whom you, you promise descendants as countless, countless as the stars of heaven and as the grain of sun on the seashore. Lord, now we are the least of all the nations. Because, because of disobedience, all the other nations drag them all over the place. And he said that, you know, Lord, Lord, no, we are the least of all the nations. No, we are despised throughout the world today because of our sins. 
We have, at this time, no leader, no prophet, no prince, no holocaust, no sacrifice, no oblation, no incense. Let me stop right there. In the Old Testament, whenever you see holocaust, you see sacrifice, oblation, and incense, you know what that is? Ob holocaust. You remember, before the coming of Christ, Blood animal was absolutely necessary for to present sacrifice on behalf of the people. That is why the Jewish word for that is Yom Kippur. The Yom Kippur, how it is, which is the feast of the, the, the celebration of the atonement to appease God. What it is before that, before the coming of Christ, the whole community have to get an animal, and everybody come together. And you lay hands on the animal and let the animal go and die in the wilderness. Symbolizing that is, that is where the expression scapegoat comes from. And everybody, you put your skin, your sin, you let go your sin, you blame the animal and let the animal go and die and for, for, your, for your sin. But with the coming of Christ, blood animal is no longer necessary. That is why when the Adventists say, carefully, you should not be eating black pudding. You all know black pudding, right? Yes. <laughs> yes. Do not eat black pudding. Why? It's because the still in the Old Testament, believing that you know blood animal is still efficient for the for the for, to wash away the sin of humanity. No, with the coming of Christ, this is no longer necessary. Christ has done it once for all as the high priest. And blood animal is no longer sacrifice is no longer necessary. Christ is the sacrificial lamb, and he himself is the priest and the, and the victim. That is why no, or young people, or young people, or atonement, we have to do that for Christ. We don't need to go and buy, go to Bridgestone and buy what is your animal to offer animal holocaust for sacrifice. That is why the first reading made reference to that. No, my dear brothers and sisters. We're moving on into the, the gospel reading. The gospel reading, you know what it is already. I mean, that is the, the big topic. That is the best kept secret for all Catholics. That is the question that we have been trying to solve from day one, and we battling with it, we struggling with it, and we cannot solve it. Peter comes to Jesus and asks him, Lord, I fed up. I fed up forgiving people. And they keep doing the same thing over and over. But no, I want you to put a limit. Yeah. Brothers and sisters, I want you to put a limit where I reach. When I reach that limit, I say, okay, I finish with him. <laughs> I don't know in, 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 in Barbados if they play that. You know, hopscotch? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> hopscotch in, in Haiti, how they do it? They mark it on the, in the yard. They mark it. I mean, no, I don't know if people have children, have all kind of. So when you reach, you pass through all the stages. You reach what they call the sky for us. The, the big, um, thing. you reach the, the last one. Now, you have to go back to the starting point, and they will sell you. Sell is to put something on, on, on your back. Like it, can, it can be the stone that you use to, to, mark, to send in the, in, in the outside. And then, by the time they sell you, and they put it on, 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 you, on you, and they let you go, they say, I'm not responsible for you. So you have to carry it and walk back. You walk back with the same journey until you reach and put it down. That is the time that you will win. Something like that. Peter want to know how many times that he should carry, he should bear, I mean, wrongdoing from people. Do you know, Peter was a hot-tempered man. It was nothing easy, you know, maybe tradition. Peter was nothing easy, you know. Peter, they went to, to, the, to the pagan territories to, the, to, to, to minister to the people. The, the people they were not accepting them. He said, well, should we call fire and with some to, to, to burn them down, to roast them like, 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 like chicken and, and, and then? Immediately, I was in, and you know very well, the same Peter, the same Peter was the one, he said, you know, he said that, you know, I'm not going to, I'm not, wherever you go, I will be there and I will fight for you. And he wanted, he wanted even to convince Jesus not to go through the Paschal mystery, the passion, Crucifixion, death, the, the, the resurrection, and the ascension. He said, no, 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 you are God. You should not be thinking about that. And then Jesus had to say, get behind me, Satan. Because he wanted to discourage him from going to what? The will of the Father. Now, the same Peter want to find out. That is why I said this morning, as I was reflecting on the reading and for this for tonight, I said there is no 
where there is no account, there is no accounting in God. In God, there is no counting, there is no nothing like that. If God would count all iniquities, who would survive? <laughs> you can imagine? If God had to take note of everything that we do, who would survive? With the, all the imperfection that we have. I don't know if I give you that story already. A man like Peter with all his imperfection. Remember, there was a Chinese man. The Chinese man, there is a water, there is a pipe, a stand pipe outside. But you know how the Chinese carry load. They carry it with the two of them hanging. You define balance. He said it's better to carry load like that than to carry one thing that will carry it on one side. It's not good. So the Chinese man have two pots carrying water every morning. Two pots. Just to show you how God is at work in all, even in all imperfection. Every morning, the Chinese man go and get water. Carry it inside. But one day, the, there is one of the pot have a crack in it. That pot complaining all the time. I'm not living up to my ability. I'm not fulfilling my duty as a pot to carry water because I have a crack in me. The other pot that, that is perfect, they have no crack in it, beating his chest, saying, Me, I'm the perfect pot in Barbados. Nobody has nothing to say about me. There is no crack in me. Nobody should can point finger at me. I'm the perfect pot. Now, the two pot decide to have a meeting with the Chinese man. <laughs> the one, the perfect pot, you know, you want people to think they are perfect. They are not, they don't have no imperfection. You know, there is an arrogance, there is a pride in them. You know, because you think that you, you are the best. I agree the best. Now, he says that, you know, to open the mouth and say, me, I'm perfect. I don't have nothing. Nobody has nothing to say about me. I don't have no, as they say in the Haitian Creole, Beth Kinney and Shepard and say, Passion Baby thing. A call that has tail, you don't cross fire. Your tail will, cross, will, will catch fire. You understand? Because, I mean, which means you, once you have imperfection, people can step on your imperfection. As they say in Creole, they can leave you on the foe to point out your imperfection. People like to do that, eh? They know. The people always say, I know who you are. I know your parents. I know where you come from. Okay, who you think you are? You know how people say that? Who you think you are? So, so it's to remind you of the nothingness of all the human person. So the pot that is perfect, saying, I'm well, I'm perfect, I'm the best pot on the Barbados. The other one say, Papa God, my goodness, I'm so sorry. I'm not fulfilling my duty as a pot. I think you should get rid of me. The Chinese man say, you know what? Number one, you're addressing the, the pot with the crack in it. Number one, although you are in perfect, you have a crack in you, but you still help me to find the balance between the perfect pot and yourself. That's number one. Number two, the Chinese man say, don't you realize that whenever I'm carrying water with you, the two, I mean, on the edge, it have flowers planted on both sides. The flowers that are planted on the side of the crack, the pot would have the crack in it. All of them looking nice and blossoming and so on. <laughs> you know what the child man said? Yes. Even our imperfection, God is at work in imperfection. God gives us the imperfection so that himself, out of that mess, he can create a message of that mess. Brothers and sisters, we all have our crack. As I say, you know, every human being, at least in our life, we spend at least five seconds crazy. <laughs> but you say, if you go beyond the five seconds, that's it, you're gone. <laughs> but in five seconds, at least in your life, you go crazy. So Peter wanted to know how many times. Like the son say, how many times? Mm -hmm. you, know, you know, how many times? People like to know, we don't want to know. For example, when you're doing the work, you want to know what time you start starting, what time you finish it. Peter has something like that in his mind. And as a result of that, he wanted, you know what he wanted to do? He wanted to know where to stop when people tr tr trouble him too much. But as he says, um, Jesus had to put, put Peter to sit down to, to help him to realize. It's not about, there's no figure in God. 
God has not been counting our imperfection. God has not been counting the time that we have to forgive and forget. That is why he said at the end, the last, he said that you know. And that is all my heavenly father will deal with you unless you, for, you, you each forgive your brother and your sister for the heart. No. Last night, the sacrament that, that was, I would say, we highlight in the reading of last night was the sacrament of baptism that bring you into the covenant of relationship with God. Tonight, the sacrament that is in there is the sacrament of forgiveness, reconciliation, forgiveness, confession. Brothers and sisters, confession, I can I compare confession. You know what I compare it to? It is like an ATM machine, an ATM, you know, automatic, automatic telemachine. Yeah, I, I, I should not say ATM machine again. So, what it is, the ATM is that. You have your card, you have the pin, not you? Yeah. If you don't have the card, you don't have the pin. Unless you get somebody else's card, you steal it from the person, you go and try something, but you need to have the pin. And then when you go to the ATM, the priest is just a male instrument. It's like the machine. It's like the, 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 the object that is there. Now, with the card, you come to access. Why do you come to access? The grace of God that is there. Now, my brothers and sisters, you know it's only what you have, what you have said, you can withdraw. I mean, you cannot go there and you don't, you, you don't have a thousand billion there. You want to go and get a thousand billion. You go beyond me. So, therefore, the law of demand and supply is applicable to that too. I mean, you know what you can demand and the supply that will come to you as you serve your demand. So, the sacrament of reconciliation, you know, asking for forgiveness for your sin, like Peter, it doesn't matter how many times you return to the sacrament with the same sin. It doesn't matter. No, how many times. God doesn't count. But then what is the most important is to recognize that you have the imperfection. You recognize that you, you fail and to come to access the grace and the mercy of God through the sacrament. And then you come to the ATM of grace and mercy. All of us. Is there anybody, is there anybody who doesn't possess a card? Put up your hand. Anybody? They know everybody they possess. You have a card. I want you to remember that. Whenever you go to the ATM, to remember the sacrament of reconciliation is something like that. You go to the ATM of Christ and mercy. Go and access the grace of mercy and mercy of God. You know what I said? Another question I have for you. Anybody who has a thousand dollars in any banking institution, you are not a poor person. And I'm sure. I'm pretty sure. And I'm absolutely sure. I can close my eyes. I, I'm sure that every single one of you are sitting down here, you have a thousand dollars to save someone. Uh, somebody say no. Mm -hmm. Not, not really. But if you, I mean, if you know you have a thousand dollars, it's said you are not poor. Because absolute poverty, as somebody was telling me last night, um, when they went to Haiti, and they see, they see poverty. Poverty, you know, becomes a person. So, it is said that if you have a thousand dollars, save someone, you are not poor. Because if you are, if you are poor, you will not have a thousand dollars, save someone, you would have used it. That's true? Exactly. Brothers and sisters, we are not, we are not poor spiritually. We treat ours, ourselves as, as poor. I mean, in fact, Jesus said that, you know, blessed are the poor in spirit. I mean, you know what he means by that. And to recognize, you is to recognize that you stand in need of the grace and the mercy of God. You have to recognize that you are, you are nothing without God. That is why, you know, and on Ash Wednesday, what we do, the imposition of ashes on our forehead. You know what that is? You don't ask yourself, why do you have to come to on Ash Wednesday to come for the people to, to remove your nice makeup and put dirt on your forehead? You know, I tell the people that in Dominica, you remember that? You can just finish bath before the witches start. Today I come a bit early. You can bathe before the witches start. And then by the time you walk a good distance, and you pass your hand somewhere there. And the more you press it, the more what you get? 
Why you here? There. Jet. You know what that is? That should be a reminder of the fact that we are not here. In fact, one of the creation accounts in the book of Genesis is the, act, the creation ex nihilo, which means out of nothing. We are nothing without God. Only when God breathed the breath of life in our nostril, we become something. And as a result of that, when that is removed from us, we back to dust. That is why. So Lent is 40 days, don't you? Yes. In 40 days, you know, I mean, quarantine, quarenta. In fact, Lent in Spanish is quaresma. Come from the good. Count. 40. Counting. When you come from somewhere, or you bring food or whatever it is, what they normally do, and the custom, what they do. If they're not too sure about where you come from. Okay, during COVID, what they used to do? When you come from overseas, or whatever it is, when you, when you come here, what they used to do? Exactly. You know what it is? It is the period that you declare what they call SOS. Save our soul. The 40 days. Of life to save our soul. 40 days that you declare a state of emergency for your soul. Yeah. A state of emergency. You know, I mean, remember when, I mean, there is crime and violence and so on, they declare a state of emergency. Yes. I mean, if you could put a microscope or something in your soul to see the state of your soul, how it is, you will run, you will run away from your own self. <laughs> but thanks be to God. I mean, the eyes, as you say, certain things that we cannot see. Remember, our senses are the doors through which enter all the knowledge that we have acquired. Either it is scientific or empirical knowledge. So therefore, my dear brothers and sisters, 40 days, we declare that SOS saved our soul. Because as human beings, we are living, we are VUCA. Volatile, uncertain, complex, and dangerous. And as a result of that, we are called to remain close to the ATM of grace, and mercy. Let us access the grace and the mercy of God through the ATM. Remember the law of demand and supply. You demand the amount of grace that you want. I mean, God will supply what is necessary. God knows everything about us. There is nothing about us God will not know. Just like Peter, do not count. Do not count. But God doesn't, there is no I'm accounting in God. But there is what they call an invitation to a spirituality of accountability. To be responsible. Responsible, control, responsible is to be able to give a response to God as a result of the gift that has been entrusted to our care, which is our soul. What is the state of your soul as we speak in right here tonight? You know yourself. I don't know you. You know yourself. You know what they say? It's a, a, a preacher must listen to yourself. If you don't listen to yourself, I mean, what you say in there doesn't make sense. Because really and truly, you must be convinced of something in order to preach it. If you are not convinced of something, you cannot convince others about it. My brothers and sisters, myself, from time to time, when I realize that day, I need to access the ATM of grace and mercy. I get up. And I find a place to do what they call sacramental confession. Sac you hear what I say? Sacramental confession. Because sometimes you may be in a place where you have no access to a priest to go to sacramental confession. But if you know you are not in the state of grace before you receive the sacrament, you know what you have to do? You know, it, it is said that you can do what they call a full and integral confession. A, a full and integral um, um, act of contrition. Is that you know God? I have no access to the ATM of grace right now, but I ask you to forgive me of anything I've done. But you have to make the resolution that whenever you get access to sacramental confession, you will make that to come to sacramental confession. You get it? You get my point? Yes. Yes. That's what they call full and integral confession. I mean, act of, I mean, act of confession, which means that you cannot get a priest to confess, but it's a Papa God. You make an act of confession. You go deep into yourself, into your heart, into yourself, to ask God for forgiveness. But immediately you get to go to the sacrament, sacramental confession, you go to the sacrament. Do not hesitate to go to sacramental confession. Brothers and sisters, let me tell you. I mean, humanity changed from, from the garden to today. I mean, just like climate change, we change too. Things happen. I mean, things happen. There's things that we have to forgive people for. And think people have to forgive us. 
if we refuse to forgive one another from our heart, our Heavenly Father will deal with us. He will give us the same treatment that you give others. So the ball is in your court now. Tonight, I wash my hand like Pontius Pilate. I tell you, for it is. So God is waiting for you. Come home and go and access the TM of grace and mercy. I repeat that again. We are vulgar, very volatile, uncertain, very complex, very ambiguous being. Therefore, let us continue to build a Christian civilization. Let us create that alternative consciousness where the word of God can be a pragmatic way of living our faith. Amen. 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 If I forget you, Jerusalem, let my tongue cleave to my mouth.